Hello and welcome to Projects in Java. Today we're going to start on our JSUP project. JSUP is an HTML parser that allows you to easily access elements of an HTML web page. So let's go ahead and go to the website. And here you can see some of the functions that JSUP allows you to do. So you can scrape and parse. This is where you get all the data and you can manipulate it however you want to. You can find information. You can also manipulate the HTML elements. So let's go ahead and take a look at the finished project. And so here what we're doing is we're creating a word count. So this will take the text and count each occurrence and put that into a grid. We also are able to get out the images. And this will work for any type of element that you're looking to get. We also did this for links. And here these links are clickable. So if we want to just go ahead and click this, this pulls up Google Images. And here we're able to get the images from the website. And so this project will be good if you ever need a set of information from a particular website but you don't want to access that manually every time to get that information. So let's go ahead and start creating our project. Let's create a new Java project. And we'll just call this JSOUP. Then we're going to need the jar file that we can get from jsoup.org. We'll click download. And we'll download the jar file. And we can just drag and drop this into Eclipse. And we'll copy it. And then we need to add that jar file to the build path. So right click it, go to build path, and add to build path. Now let's go ahead and create the first class. We'll call this website parser. The first class from JSOUP that we're going to be using is called document. And when you hover, make sure to import org.jsoup. Then we're also going to use a scroll pane. So if our links or if our images are too long, and so if we put it into a scroll pane, we won't have a problem being able to view all of the elements of it. And let's create a default constructor, so website parser. And what we're going to do here is connect to a website. So this is jsoup.connect. And we're going to connect to google.com. And surround that with a try and catch. And we're going to create a method here called get links. So public void get links. And the first thing we're going to do in here is get the elements that are links. And the examples that I'm going to give are going to use different ways of getting elements. So here we're going to use the DOM method. That's the, that is the document object model. So those are things that you're used to seeing in regular JavaScript if you've used that before. So we'll use get elements by tag. And the tag for a link is an A. So if we get all the elements with the tag A, those should all be links. We'll import elements. And we're going to have a link panel. 
this is going to store the links before we put them into the scroll pane. And the link panel is going to have a grid layout. So link panel dot set layout is equal to new grid layout. And it's going to be size of links dot size and one. And then for each element, we'll call this link in links. So here we're going to get the href attribute. That is the actual link that the URL will go to. So it's link dot attribute. And you pass in the string with the attribute name, which is href. And so if l dot link is greater than zero, And here we're going to check if the length is less than 4. And if it's less than 4, that means it doesn't have the full length. It doesn't have the HTTP colon. So we're going to assign L. And we're going to get the base URI of the document. And then plus L dot substring. And we're going to strip the first character. And then else if not equal L substring. From 0 to 4. dot equals HTTP. And so in the first condition, for sure we're not seeing HTTP because the length is not more than four characters. And then in the second condition, we're seeing if it is. If it is, that means we have a usable link. If it isn't, then we need to add the base URI again. So we'll just copy this. And then here we'll create a J label. Call this label is equal to new J label. And we'll pass that L. And we'll add the label to the link panel. So link panel dot add label. And then S pane is equal to new J scroll pane. And we'll pass that the link panel. Then we also need to set a preferred size for the scroll pane. And it's going to be equal to a new dimension. And we'll do 350 by 350. And now we need to add S pane so that we're able to view it. And we're actually going to add that as a tab pane. So here we're going to extend J tab pane. And that's what gives us the tabs on top. And in each of those, we can specify something like a scroll pane or a J panel. 
and here's how we add a tab pane. So add tab, and you're going to pass it first the name of the tab. So here we call this links, and then you pass it the component. Now let's go and create a main method. So public static void main string array args. And here we're going to have a JFrame. We'll call this frame. It's equal to new JFrame. And the title for that is going to be website parser. And then frame dot set default close operation is equal to jframe dot exit on close. And then we're going to create a website parser object. And we need to add that to the frame. So frame.add wp. Then we'll make it visible. So set visible. And we'll pass that true. And then we'll set the size. We'll make this 400 by 400. And so before we run this, we need to move this section out of the for each loop. Otherwise, it's going to execute that many times. And here, before we add the tab, we need to process the links. So we'll call get links. And let's go ahead and test this. And we have our links. And right now, they're not clickable. We'll be able to add that in one of our next videos.